Sombra's in a bit of a weird state. Now, normally when I do videos like these, I actually spend only around three or four hours grinding the character in Ranked, done this with Bastion, I've done this with Life Fever, and while I haven't actually made content for this, I've done this with May, I've done this with Brigitte pre-buff back in Season 2, this with Arissa in Season 1, and even did this with a little bit of Genji. But most importantly, I've had success in ranking up with all those characters to around the Master's level without too much difficulty, even though my mechanics and my grind capability is just not what it wants to be. This is about the most ranked that I've played in Overwatch 2 since its launch. I've almost put 20 hours on Sombra. I've actually had a hard time consistently staying with Masters, which is saying a lot considering that usually my game sense and decision making is enough to carry me. You see, the Sombra, I felt something that I haven't felt in a long time. I felt my mechanics seemed more of a limiting factor than it has with any character that I've played besides Widowmaker. And that was not something at all that I expected. You see, I played old Sombra a little bit, and mostly game sense, positioning, hack timing, target priority, things like that were things that I could leverage. But with this new virus and this new extremely dynamic playstyle, I had a really hard time. And I also think that the character might be lacking in terms of the value ceiling, of how much value you're able to get out of the character when you play it at a reasonably high level, or even just value floor for a new person trying to pick up the character. And that can be both a good and a bad thing. So let's talk about the good things about Sombra. And I've got some notes here, and I want to actually review my gameplay when this is done. So the first thing that's good is the assassination threat. The ability to land a virus and just mow somebody down with a new buff damage feels really, really satisfying. I think the virus tick, 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 the dopamine of landing the DOT is also extremely satisfying, if, even if it's not always that effective, depending on the circumstances, but it feels great. And I think the key thing is that while I complain about how uh, EPM and intensive a Sombra play is, I do think that that's part of the reason why she feels so much fun, is she is very dynamic and very intense. So it feels like at any moment, you're one mistake away from death at all times. It feels almost a little bit like playing Wrecking Ball, where there's not as many individual texts with the character. However, there's just as many mechanical demands and just as many micro decisions in any given team fight. And I think that's part of the reason what makes her feel so difficult but also what makes her feel so fun. So now let's talk about things that are not so good. And unfortunately, there is a lot of them. Now, this is just gonna be me basically ranting a little bit, getting off every single problem that I have with the character. Some of these problems are not problems that can or should be solved, but they are limitations that we need to be aware of, I think, when we talk about balancing the character in the future. First thing, the defensive cooldown translocator is not instantaneous, takes a long time, takes aim, and takes flicking your camera away from where you're looking 99% of the time. It can also get canceled by CC right now. Now, I know that they say that they fixed this bug. This bug is still not fixed. I Just this today in my games, I've been hooked out of it. I've been pinned out of it. Now, that's a weird interaction. You actually, the pin completes, but you don't actually translocate and you don't actually die. You get pinned and then you just stand there. It's super, super weird, but you consistently, I've been bashed out of it today. Um, so they need to fix that. The fact that I have to be shooting here, flip my camera and do that, and then you don't immediately re-enter stealth makes it one of the weakest defensive cooldowns in the game. It's very fun to use when it's used properly, but it's extremely punishable and it is a big prop behind this cooldown. Second thing, damage on frontline with or without hack is C minus tier at best uh, and more situational than ever with the hack damage boost reduction, the hack damage boost gone. So in other words, they've buffed her damage slightly, which is pretty significant. You know, it's definitely, you definitely feel it in a lot of circumstances. However, one of the things that I think a lot of, uh, higher tier players were saying that, oh, you should be able to Sombra 76 more, you should be able to Sombra 76 more. And I found that not to be the case at all in 90% of circumstances. If they're on Doomfist, Genji Tracer, Moira Lucio Reaper, a Sombra Mirror, there's a lot more opportunity. I found playing versus a Winston, Sombra 76 was very, very good. And by Sombra 76, I mean basically holding front line and just shooting the tank from a soft off angle. But when I was playing against any sort of spam, the Viari, Batiste, Zviata, Hanzo, Widowmaker, Soldier, anything, even Torbjorn, right? I had a really, really hard time standing anywhere on a frontline angle. Now, one of the things that I used to be able to do with old Sombra is you'd say, well, you don't have to peek the backline. Instead, you hold an off angle. Let's give me a good example here. Like, let's say this is the tank and this is the enemy backline. I'm going to hold on an aggressive off angle and just shoot the tank here. Isolate the tank. Don't let the squishies shoot me in the back. And then I can just translocate out. And that sometimes works. And I was able to leverage that sometimes. But the problem is, is that with translocator, because I have to flick it and move it, it's not always as guaranteed as it once was. There's still even risk in hold doing that. Just holding a soft off angle, shooting the enemy ting, there's still risk with that. Uh, and it's something that I got punished for a lot when I wasn't super attentive to where it was around me, or if I messed up my translocated throw for even a second. So what I found in most circumstances is situational uh, assassinations or threat of assassination. So either going for an assassination to distract and for CDs, 
or to actually get the kill, doing so multiple times. I think Yidl says that Sombra is a new wrecking ball, and I wholeheartedly agree where it really feels like you need cycles of pressure where you could die if you mess up just to force CC, or force CDs, excuse me, or CC or CDs, and then actually get the finishing kill on your second, third, or even fourth cycle. And all of these things take inherent risk from the Sombra, a lot more risk from the Sombra than it is from the target that's being hacked. At least that's the case with most competitions you're playing into. Uh, virus is difficult to land on people who are paying attention. So hack into virus immediately loses value, but the virus by itself doesn't do enough to consistently win 1v1. So in other words, when I hack into virus, I'm giving them time to not necessarily react to the hack. That's very difficult to react to now. And I'm giving them time to 80-80 strafe, which makes the virus more difficult to land. Now, the, again, it is a mechanical skill check, which I think is a great thing about the character, but it is a downside about the character that we need to be aware of. Opening with virus and then shooting, though, is not always a guaranteed 1v1 versus a lot of the characters of the game. Yari, Teast, Kiriko, Soldier, Casty, you cannot open with virus into shots and expect to win that 1v1 99% of the time. Those characters, you're going to open with a hack, go into virus. But the problem with that is then you give them the opportunity to 80-80 strafe your virus. And as people get better mechanically, they also get better at movement. So at things that are more easily missed in uh, higher ranks are not necessarily because the aim is worse. Obviously, the aim is better, but because the movement of the target is a little bit better. So I found myself having to really think hard about when I should be hacking into a virus. And, I, and again, I think this, is, this kind of thought process made it a lot of fun but also made in a lot of situations feel really, really bad. And more often than not, hacking just didn't really feel all that useful. Um, it makes it really, really hard to win a 1v1, and it basically is downright impossible if they get any support at all. By virus and shots, if there is any support whatsoever, that kill doesn't happen. Now, that's normal. We don't want a Sombra to be able to win a 2v1. That is ridiculous, and there's a very careful balance we have to do with the virus. However, however, the problem is that it takes more risk for me to do this play than it does for the person that has to punish that play. At least that's the overall problem with Sombra when you combine it with the Transgator. EMP is one of the weaker ultimates with the damage on your, gan your gun gone, and the HP nerf used to be 40% damage, now it's 30% damage, which is fine. But the major problem is that the opportunist, which was the damage boost on hack targets, is now completely gone. So now you can use your EMP, and yes, you might do what the virus uh, boost onto the one target you virus, but you don't do more damage to hack targets. And that is by far the biggest nerf the EMP, not the HP nerf. Now, I'm not necessarily asking for that back, but it is one of the reasons why EMP feels really bad right now. Um, the stealth is obviously useful, but obviously is very punishing if you misuse it. The uh, detect radius is very, very large, so you have to be very careful with it. Um, her weakness on frontline, let's talk about some play style here, uh, forces you into frequent high-risk, high-reward plays that demand your cooldown to function, but leave you with no escape and are immediately countered by almost any CD from either DPS or support heroes. And I think that's the hard thing, is that you need to use both your virus and your translocator for this to successfully work, either to get out or engage or whatever. But then anything like a Suzu, a Lamp, a Batiste Shift, even a Cassie Grenade can pretty much shut down that engage, and there's a very high chance that you get punished for it. Um, this ends up resulting in a hide-and-seek, tickle-slash-harass game with high threat on fully distracted cooldownless enemies, but high risk with enemies that have anything. This feels terrible dopamine-wise, as you're almost exclusively reliant off of indirect value until very late in fight with anything that has any sort of defensive CC or CDs. Feels a lot like Ball Winston into full counters every time the enemy picks any sort of poke slash strong backline. Kiriko, Baptiste, Iliari, um, Brigitte, mostly support characters, but also if we include some of the other characters like Cassidy, Sojourn, uh, even something like a Soldier 76, depending on the circumstance, depending how full a split he is from his team, and things like Torbjorn, right? These are characters that are really impossible to assassinate in the first time through, even if you play it well. So what does that leave you with? Well, it leaves you with you go in, you pray that they don't hit their shots, you go out, you pray that you hit your transcator, and then you go back in, and you pray that they don't hit their shots again. And during both times, you have to land your virus and your shots at the same time. Now, again... My point here is not that these aspects are bad. I think overall we have a support problem. I think that is unquestionably the case in terms of supports using CDs on themselves feels too bad. However, I don't have a problem with the high risk, high reward play style. It is the most fun part of Sombra for sure. However, we need to look very carefully and understand that the risk involved with Sombra is probably why she's struggling in higher ranks. And she is struggling in higher ranks. Anywhere from Masters Plus, she's having a hard time in the win rate. We know this from the Blizzard developer report themselves. 
And so we need to be asking ourselves, is the reward worth the risk? And what things do we need to be changing about summer to fix that? I'm going to get to that in a little bit. Uh, hack in general with damage boost lost from the opportunist is almost not worth using the majority of circumstances. So it feels a little bit of a flaw where if all I do is maybe hack a Doomfist or a Ball, maybe I hack a Cassidy to deny him his grenade, but there's only a few circumstances where opening with hack is better. Generally, that doesn't feel like the ability is all that good. And maybe that's just as well. I've never been a hack fan. I think hack is one of the most fundamentally flawed abilities in the game. Taking some away some of these abilities is not something that I find to be, I just don't find that to be good game design, especially when it's not a particularly useful skill shot. Um, however, it is a bit weird to still have a very fundamental part of her gameplay in certain circumstances, niches, but a lot of percentages, you just don't use it at all. And I, I find that very strange design. Um, cycle of uptime is still just a big problem with the character. I don't necessarily find this to be a big problem, but there are going to be a lot of compositions, a lot of maps, and a lot of situations where you're going to have a lot of downtime because unlike what they said here, any character with stealth fundamentally is going to need to use that stealth to reposition for more aggressive off angles and uh, go for assassinations. That's just how the character is. When you have a strength like stealth, you have to use it in that way. When you go for stealth, you go for deeper backline because Sombra does not have consistent self-sustain like something like a Tracer or even a Wrecking Ball has or that level of speed consistently. It means that the uptime is going to be a lot lower just by the nature of the character itself. You will be able to have cycles of uptime depending on the comp that are relatively decent, but most of the time when you're going for assassinations, you still have that downtime cycle that old Sombra had, but it just feels a lot more risky when you're going for that uptime. Um, that's the only really change. I don't think that I find her significantly higher in uptime compared to old Sombra, especially with the fact that Sombra 76 is a much less viable option. A virus is just not consistent value on the enemy tank, and it's way too risky to be able to get out of jail free when the old translocator is just, was just a better defensive cooldown in terms of getting out immediately. Um, okay, so it really felt like the first character, I mean, this, like I said, like I said, the first character since Widowmaker, where I actually felt like my mechanics were the limiting option or the limiting problem or my reaction speed or my ability to be fully focused, right? Like I'm the average Joe essentially now. I'm not the old grandmaster player that I used to be where my priority is coaching and teaching and content creation and editing. So I don't have three or four hours every day to spend grinding summer mechanics. And I found that a lot of the times the fights where I was playing really well weren't the fights where I was just making good decisions, but the fights where I was fully focused, mechanically popping off and super engaged. And that's just a lot to ask for somebody that wants to play Sombra. Now, that's not a lot to ask. If we want Sombra to fulfill that high skill ceiling uh, design of Tracer or Widowmaker, um, but if that's the case, then I think that she needs to be rewarded a little bit more for that risk. At least that's my take. A couple of solutions that I propose. These are small, small changes. Um, some of them are small. Some of them are not so small. Let me know what you think. First thing, I think the translocator hitbox needs to be smaller. For something that needs to be a skill shot, the number of times that I've clonked it into a wall is absolutely ridiculous. The, tra the translocator hitbox is way too big. I think if we get rid of it, shrink it a little bit, we'd have we're cut down the number of times that it clips through door frames when it shouldn't or clips through uh, walls when it should, or doesn't clip through walls when it should. I think probably shrinking the hitbox a little bit would be great. Another thing that is really, really important, I think this is absolute must, is I think the animation of translocating needs to be a little bit faster. I don't know if the translocator itself needs to move a little bit faster. I don't know if the delay before going into it needs to be shorter, um, but it, it feels really, really, really bad to actually throw a translocator successfully, disengage, and then you died anyway because you edged it a little bit too far. And that was where the biggest gap between old translocator and current translocator is, where you translocate it out instantly. This one is not even close to instant, and especially because you have to aim it. It feels really, really, really bad. Um, I think we should consider, maybe this one is too overpowered, but having a small bit of sustain on using Translocator, where when you use Translocator, you heal yourself for a very small amount, 40, 50 healing, anything that would allow her to sustain in fights, maybe have a slightly higher uptime and to be punished fewer uh, for Translocating out. Um, and then I also think that we should take a look at how we buff EMP. I don't think necessarily just giving it back to 40% is going to solve all the problems. I would love to feel like when I EMP that I get some of my opportunist damage boost back. Um, I don't know if that needs to be the full, what is it, 30% damage boost versus hack targets. I don't think it necessarily needs to be that, but even just something like 10%, 15%, something that makes me feel like EMP, I can have a little bit more direct impact with my EMP besides just subtracting a raw amount of HP away. I do not think you want the hack lock out longer. I don't think hack is the way to go when it comes to summer bus. Um, and then I'll please, please, please fix the stun bugs with Translocator. Nothing feels worse than outplaying a Roadhog hook and being hooked to the translocator anyway. Um, that feels really, really bad. Um, I think if we do make these changes or some of these changes, I think you need to look at Virus because right now, um, as it is, she still is probably too broken when it comes to spawn camping certain characters. Um, nothing feels worse for a Zenyatta than a Sombra just walking on you, hitting Virus. 
throwing Transcator away, and there's almost no counterplay whatsoever. And I think that's super, super frustrating. I think the same can be said for Widowmaker. Um, same can be said also for Mercy. And I think that this is what makes it feel really bad is because we talk about buffing Sombra. Everyone's like, no, 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 it's already obnoxious as it is. And yet her win rate suffers. The only thing that she does very well at are the supports that are already OP as it is. So I think we need to take a very careful look at what we buff and what we nerf for Sombra because I actually think that she probably deserves a little bit of buff. I think she overall needs a buff, but some things might need to look and nerf as well, specifically her raw assassination capability. Um, I think we should take a look at it, especially once people get more comfortable with her. I know that I definitely improve the more I practice with her, um, but the high, the, the high skill demands means that there needs to be some sort of reward for this character as well. Um, if the, we want all characters to be uh, viable, then we need to kind of keep an eye on that. I found myself feeling relief when the anime team went Sombra um, because sometimes I'd be like, oh, you know, I'm struggling versus their Cassidy, their Hans, or their whatever. But they go Sombra, okay, it's GG's. I know Sombra's just a bad character. Um, and I think that that was, that was just a strange, a strange thing for me. So. So the first things first is notice is that their backline is relatively tanky. There's a lot of targets there that I can assassinate given the circumstances of no sleep, no nade, no grenade, um, no ice block, no pylon, no outburst. There's a lot of things that I can do. So I'm hacking all the health packs really quickly because we do have a wrecking ball and I want to provide that opportunity for him to be able to do whatever he wants. Now, right here, this is honestly a little bit silly for me. I could, I needed to be very careful about where I come out of stealth from standing out in the open here. It's probably a little bit silly, but I do allow my mercy to get off the res and survive. I re-throw my translocator so that I can enter stealth back faster, so I can be ready to follow up onto my ball dive. And this is where I think I needed to reposition myself. I think this is where like Sombra feels really, really bad. I think not being able to go for the Ana and the Ari just because Pylon is shutting me down is a huge, huge, huge problem. I think this is where I should have re-entered stealth, dropped over here, thrown my virus here, or just shot, then thrown my virus on the supports at the same time as my ball going in. That would have allowed me to actually secure one of these kills, most likely, and also give me a better angle for follow-up. I find Ryan overextended. This is honestly something I probably shouldn't have really been spending a lot of time for. Um, this is, again, where you really feel uh, Sombra's tank damage really dip off in certain circumstances. One of the things I noticed about Sombra is that it feels really good when you have support on dives. Um, one of the things that a lot of flankers like Tracer uh, are good at is they don't always require follow-up. They can distract pretty much single-handedly. But because Sombra feels so much riskier with the engages, with these dives, but so much higher reward if it can work out, it felt much better when I had some sort of follow-up to my dives or some sort of leadership, whether it was a Winston going in, a Wrecking Ball going in ahead of me. I really enjoyed playing with Wrecking Ball because a lot of times he would absorb some of the cooldowns and then I would execute off of those cooldowns. And I think that's the big thing with Sombra is that given the stars aligning, you could feel absolutely oppressive of this character. But if anything goes wrong, it goes terribly. So having a very aggressive tank with Sombra always felt good. And that's not usually something that a lot of characters demand. Like even a Tracer doesn't demand an aggressive tank because she has that self-sustain, because she has the capability of shifting the battlefield just kind of by herself. So the big thing with EMP is that I essentially just need to either open with it in a safe location where I'm not going to get punished for using it. So I never want to open and hard commit with EMP unless we're hard pushing, or I can use it to shut down an enemy ultimate. In this situation, I kind of egoed with it. I probably should have waited a little bit later for my Wrecking Ball to actually commit with me. Um, my Wrecking Ball did distract this, but this was a little bit risky because I didn't have my Transicator yet. Thankfully, their Cassidy missed his shot. Probably should have not gotten away with that one. The key thing there would have been to probably EMP then throw my Transicator right back out. Hold the off angle. Ryan is overextended. This is where I can just chill and shoot tank. And then as soon as I see that he's basically unkillable, I'm looking for a new target. I hear Cassidy behind. I'm going to go check around the Cassidy, and he's going to die. Now, this was a pretty fun play. I knew that, that we were going to want to go for a recontest with the amount of ultimates that we had and the fact that we had Wrecking Ball. So I kind of ego a little bit here. I'm thinking, I don't think these guys are going to hit their shots. So I'm going to try and stall cart once. I'm going to do it again, too. Stall cart twice. Probably could have thrown my virus there, too. Then my Wrecking Ball stalls. I'm going to break... Break the pylon. I'm gonna stall card again, and then disengage. And then now we're ready for an EMP. And even if it doesn't shut down the ultimate, it just slows it down just enough to, for us to be able to hold it out here. And I think this is one of the fights where we talk about like jumping ahead to the next map here. 
This is where it was one of those situations where it's like, it just feels like the backline differential, where like their summer just has a much better chance of like actually securing assassinations. Whereas I, I don't necessarily have that same level of chance. Like I can hit the virus here. I can shoot the life with part in the mechanics. He's going to disengage. He's going to lunge out. And he's going to reset and he's going to go again. Now, obviously at this point in time, I am cutting off healing. There's not, there's not that there's no value in doing that. There's just a lot of risk for me doing that. I could have just gotten logged by Hanzo. I could have gotten shot by their Kiriko. I could have gotten shot or hacked by their Sombra. And there's much better chance of this summer getting the, securing the assassination on my Zenyatta with lower risk with me getting the same on their life weaver. Now you might be saying, oh, well, why don't you mark their Sombra? The problem with that though, is that it's hard to mark their Sombra when I'm standing in front of a Hanzo. So I can't really do both. I have to actually choose which one I want to go for. Do I want to try and cut off their support while he's cutting off my support? And obviously missing that virus there, you know, I'm pretty much cooked. But it feels constantly if my backline isn't quite as somber proof, then I'm going to have a much harder time. Whereas my backline is going to have a much, a much, much, much harder time. And this is a great example, I think, right here, where it's like, what, what's the plan here? Do I go for backline, try and force uh, Suzu? Do I try and force Lifeweaver? Um, I know I'm going to get cleared very quickly by a Kiriko. Uh, and I maybe, if I'm lucky for Suzu, maybe not even anything. Um, or do I try and go mark their Sombra? It's honestly a little bit hard to say. Whereas their Sombra, remarkably simple, really. And she's able to stay. Whereas I... At best, I could take an angle and shoot tank because going for backline just isn't the same amount of value. So while my team peels, their team pushes. I use the MP to try and buy us some time. And because their backline is able to play in position in a way to where it's hard for me to pressure them, their backline is free to use their utility however they like. And this is kind of what I was talking about where it's how hard not having an aggressive tank. Now let's look and take a look at a match where I feel like I actually had a pretty big impact on the battlefield. And this is where Samra feels amazing, even into quote unquote counters. If the stars align and your utility, whether it's through your stealth or through your assassination threat is able to be leveraged, it feels awesome. So I realize that there's spawn camping. I've never seen this before in Hollywood. So I'm just going to go touch point and I'm actually going to get a tick, disengage, pull the fight all the way back to me. And during that rotation, they actually end up dying. Hacking health back so that I'm able to better sustain in the back line. Waiting for my team to pressure. Hit my virus. Mercy's dead. Trying to live on back line as long as I can because if I'm not going to be one shot, it's okay for me to stay here for longer. Now, this is where I make a mistake. And I think this is like this. This is the somber trap where you feel things starting to snowball a little bit. So you get a little bit lazy. You cannot, cannot get lazy with somber at any point in time. Even when a fight's won, you need to immediately take that position or that time to reposition yourself and set up for backline assassinations. As long as they're in Kiriko, as long as they're on uh, Mercy, that's something that it's more of a priority. You cannot somber 76 here. So I'm thinking, oh, I'll just get a hack with virus. This guy's overextended. I miss the virus because I'm terrible. Um, but regardless, I can't afford to stick around here. Because what ends up happening is because I don't take this time to rotate into backline, maybe try to spawn camp Torbjorn, at least force his overload, then spawn camp again and kill him. Because that's usually how these things go. Um, I'm stuck inside of my team. And this is where Summer feels really, really quite bad. Now, this is where Summer feels amazing. Fight is devolved. My team is engaged. I'm unable to cancel res in time. Easy angle to be able to kill that Mercy. Getting healing. Tree is out now. I'm able to take my off angle to immediately just start picking off squishies as they're isolated. Translocate back up in the air, re-enter stealth, get the healing pulse, keep going. And it's in these devolved, like, <laughs> this is so stupid to me, but it's in these devolved, like, deathmatchy fights where things start to feel really, really good for Zomra because you, people are so distracted that they can't hard focus you down. That's kind of the problem right now. With, it's like, like I said, some of the wrecking ball problem where if the enemy team composition is good for it and the enemy team has the mobility of the cooldowns for it, it is easy for them to chase and down and kill you. And it is hard for you to be able to leverage that as like, okay, I'm serving as a distraction. My team will be able to capitalize off the attention. That is true, but it's hard to leverage that consistently and play your life if you're not 100% focused. If you make any mistake, you die. And then all the attention that you forced is wasted. And finally, I want to finish off where I felt like a hold was actually pretty dominant here. Uh, we're able to hold on first point. And I think this is a great example of showcasing both sides of where Sombra is really, really strong. 
The enemy team goes full poke, then actually transitions into more of an anti-Sombra dive composition where I'm actually able to play a little bit more Sombra 76 and we're able to find a lot of success with that. So let's take a look here. So the Widowmaker has got a lot of pocket early on and my team was got picked off regardless. So I was unable to successfully assassinate her because she had double heal pocket. Um, so I'm going to keep trying though. And I'm going to wait till my team is actually in a position to touch at the last possible second and when I find that Widow scoped. I'm not going to hack. I'm going to immediately virus into SMG and her headshots because the travel time of the virus will allow me to actually shoot before she's able to even able to react to the virus. And I get really close here. And what this is going to do is this is going to force attention. Now, I know they're coming after me, so I'm not going to waste any time. I'm not going to waste, wait till I take damage. I'm just going to immediately disengage out. And they're going to actually send one, two, a lot of resources my way. And what this does is this allows my Doomfist to engage safely while I'm able to immediately reset up with almost no downtime and go right back in again on a different angle. So my Doomfist is now engaged, my Soldier and EDRA are about to engage, and again, I have another sightline in this Widowmaker. I don't know why she's positioned here, but you know what, we take what we can get. So again, the solution is the same, virus in the shots. And this time, we're able to melt her. Now here, this fight has devolved, so I have to get out almost immediately. In fact, I actually overstayed my welcome there. As soon as I'd killed the Widowmaker, I probably should have immediately gone backwards or gone in towards my team. I'm gonna translocate forward, I almost die, I try to juke the damage, I hack the midi, now I'm gonna go right back in again. Now I'm gonna focus the Iliari, but I'm really looking for Farah here because she's honestly the most cushy thing if she's out of position. I'm gonna virus the pylon. Doom is overextended, Doom gets hacked. Coach mechanics, Farah's now overextended. Focus the Farah down. She's pushing in while her Doomfist is out. Translocate back to high ground. I'm gonna set up off of my Doomfist disengage. Able to virus the Iliari, then um, uh, shoot the pylon, excuse me. And then now we're able to stabilize. I accidentally emoked. <laughs> so here I'm setting up for EMP thinking that they're going to open with either Barrage, the Yari ultimate, something along those lines. And I just want to try and ruin their ultimate engage. But then as soon as this far overextends to this point in time, I'm just thinking, hey, this is a free kill. I can puppy guard res. We're good to go. So I'm just going to solo EMP this far off. I hit the virus, I hit the shots, and she's dead. That's going to use their Forcer Doomfist ultimate, who's also low off of that. And now all I have to do is make sure they don't get res, and this is basically a team fight win. And now because their Farah is down, and because they no longer have Widowmaker, and because I have tree pull ceiling, I can kind of do what I like to call Sombra 76, where I hold this off angle here, I shoot the tank, I shoot the Cassidy, and I'm just gonna hold this angle, put out as much pressure as I possibly can. Normally not something that I can always do, Maybe not the most intelligent engaged, but I'll take the solo ult. Now, look at their composition. They've actually transitioned to Torbjorn now, which has even a little bit less pick potential on me. Um, does discourage me from going for backline a little bit more. And the Winston, which is really, really good for me to shoot down because I can break bubble very, very, very quickly. And honestly, even virus on bubble is pretty good because you get the guaranteed DPS. And so now I'm essentially just holding this angle with pocket and shooting. I will go for assassinations if I see them, but I don't necessarily have to force them as much. Winston looks at me, doesn't matter. He's gonna get tracked. A Little bit too close here. But because they basically transition away from the Widowmaker, um, they've transitioned away from the more poke style DPS, then it allows me to play a little bit more passively and control an angle and just hold down mouse one. So I hope you guys learned a little bit from this. I think my goal needs to be, I need to consistently uh, respect the enemy threats, probably disengage a little bit faster. Um, I think I need to be taking slightly better angles um, when I'm looking for backline commits, and I honestly just need to keep practicing those viruses. I think those are definitely the three things that I need to be looking at here. Um, overall, main takeaway for Sombra, I really enjoy the character. I think she's a lot of fun to play. I think it needs to be some quality of life buffs in terms of how her translocator works, and we need to keep a careful look on her balance. Is she too much of a assassinate backline cheese? Does she lose too much value in other things? Is the dynamics of her character design too myopic in terms that she only brings value when she can assassinate backline. Is this a support prom? Is this a Sombra prom? Uh, prom? There's a lot to unpack here. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and let me know what you would think about the new Sombra. I'll chat with you in the next video.